Hey traders from around the world, this is Jeremy Alexander Newsom with your Monday Real Life Stock Review. Hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Hope you had a good weekend too. Weather was gorgeous here in Nashville. Crazy weather recently. It was about 70 or so, 67. Went on, uh, went on some hikes on Saturday and Sunday. Got a chance to play some wall ball, play, uh, did a little bit of slack lining. So yeah, weekend was good. Had a lot of Good opportunities to go outside. That's kind of sweet. So this is um, the reallifetrading.com website. I got a few new articles up there today. This one's uh, one from another trader named Adam Faragali, one of my really good friends. Love the guy. Lives in Murfreesboro. Beautiful, beautiful person. Uh, anyway, the case for accumulating energy stocks in 2016. If you get a chance to read that one, that's a phenomenal read. I'll be sending that one out later in the emails in the future. Uh, also, Real Life Trading on the Facebook page. We have one of those. Got a few new likes today. This is fantastic. So this is a request brought to you by my boy, Phil. And I'll get to do my best to look at Facebook today for Brian. So Phil was asking, is there a big divergence on the Russell 2000 index? And is this similar to 2007, 2008? So if we look at the Russell 2000 index, which a lot of people like to track, uh, you'll notice that in 2000, 2007 uh, area, we had a dip. The trade went up a little bit higher and we kind of had a little bit of a double top pattern, came down and then we broke really, really strongly, obviously in 2008. So the divergence is simply that we are making or we're making higher lows in the stock, but we were making relative or lower highs on what's called the MACD. So we'll be posting a link to how to use MACD in real life in the comment section below if you wanna check out that video. Uh, but anyway, I would agree, absolutely, yes, there was some divergence there on the Russell 2000. Um, and so he's saying, is there some index uh, divergence now? And the answer is yes, there is. So here's what's interesting about divergence. Divergence doesn't necessarily mean that the stock is going to you know, go really strong in one direction or another. It simply means that momentum is going to slow. And 100% for sure, momentum has slowed for the bulls on the Russell 2000 index. Now, if we just take a flip side of this and say what well, also kind of looks like a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern, Newsom, it looks like we broke through the neckline. I agree on the Russell index overall, uh, I have, th I think this confirmed bearish. So this is the IUX. Here's how I personally trade the Russell 2000 is with the IWM and the IWM uh, as well. You can see uh, a very nice divergence, right? We made a higher high on the monthly chart and we had a lower high on the MACD. So we have closed below supports. We have closed below uh, trend lines. We have a bearish gap right there on the IWM. So this is a retest gap. If we do in fact, and did close all the neckline of a head and shoulders pattern, we do have to retest that neckline on the IWM or on head and shoulders patterns. And I think that's really what the next few weeks could be doing on the IWM. So here's the daily chart on the IWM. And if I could just break down, since we're still talking about divergence, on the daily chart, we have bullish divergence on the daily chart. So that meant, that says to me that on the daily chart, the bearish momentum is going to slow down and we could get into a nice retracement, retest, sideways move really for, for the next few weeks, which we have been for a while, um, you know, retesting. So this was a nice little retest. We broke lower, had some bearish positions up there. And uh, because again, the reason they're not directional, the reason I wasn't just straight up in puts is because that retest is more likely coming. So, you know, here is the uh, just candle version of what we got. And the 104 resistance is going to be strong on the IWM. Here's the exponential moving averages. The 50 EMA is at 103.95. So that's probably what we're gonna be coming to test next on the IWM. And it will be interesting to see exactly how that transpires or plays out. So if, uh, as far as the indices go, IWM, yes, I think is confirmed bearish. I think it has broken below necklines and I'm waiting on the retest to see what the retest is gonna do. Very, very cautious trading the IWM bullish. And the reason that I have been neutrally cautious on the IWM is because the SPY and other bigger, um, well, the other ETFs, right? The Dow Jones, the S&P, and the NASDAQ have not broken their lower lows. They have not made lower lows, has not broken their support. So if I hop over here to a monthly chart on the SPY and um, we just hide all of these uh, drawings and look at just the candles, you can see that the SPY 
here is um, one of the reasons that rolled over in 2008. A lot of people fail to realize that in, in the SPY in 2000, it just ran into a very beautiful resistance, right? It did that three times, uh, broke through. That's the reason one of the bullish, one of the reasons that we went so bullish in the market. And here's your support on the SPY. So we have traded to a rock solid support that we have been before and we have and are bouncing. Now, can we break that support? Absolutely. Will we? I truly don't know. Don't know if we do, and if we don't, I'm not going to go bearish. Uh, I am long-term neutral, uh, so buy low, sell high on the markets. Long-term is kind of what my focus is on this at this particular point in time. And the SPY uh, really overall is doing exactly what we well thought it would do. We had uh, the SPY bouncing at a really, really good support. Check out these volume, volume profiles. Very nice volume as we're coming in to support. Traded back up, traded back down, and bounce. And right there, that's when I gave the, hey guys, if we, when we make a higher high, higher low, this is the support, this is the bounce, let's make things happen. Drew in the fact that we could do this, uh, mentioned that we'd likely pull back a little bit and then bounce, and so far we are making a higher high and a higher low today. Here's what's interesting. The high of the January 13th candle. So I've mentioned this a few times as the candle that we really need to break above before we're going to go um, bullish, bullish on the SPY. The high of that candle is 194.86. The high of today, 194.95. So we barely, barely have broken it, but we have. We didn't close above it, not that that necessarily matters. But here's my intention on the SPY. If I hop over here to the exponential moving averages, notice we are above the 50 on the SPY. We're making higher highs. Probably going to do something like this, is my guess. If the SPY is going to continue bullish, is it likely will trade up a little bit, just like it did in August when it formed the big double bottom back in August, as we break above the 50, trade down and retest, and then bounce. So break above the 50, trade back down, bounce, retest, and then probably make its way back to 200. Potentially, uh, I think that's a minimum target, and then maybe as high as, honestly, back up to 209, 210. Buy low, sell high, sell high, buy low. I'm entirely neutral on the broader markets. I'm not looking for anything bearish yet. But Phil, you're absolutely correct, and others. Uh, there are, is some very, very interesting signals out there, and I think there is some diverging factors that are going to keep the markets uh, very, very volatile the next few weeks. Here's the Dow Jones Industrial ETF, the DIA. This is how I trade the Dow Jones. And here's the doji that we got on that glorious Friday. Bounce off support, traded higher, and again, a little bit of a double bottom. We're making higher highs and higher lows. Yes, the volume is abysmal, but here's just a simple fact, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of uh, a lot of traders out there who are going massively bearish um, at these support levels, this 156. You can't, uh, well, you can, obviously, but it's really not conducive to be a perma bear at strong supports. If you're going to be a really, really strong bear, uh, be a strong bear at resistances and then be a bull at strong supports, right? So again, there's a little double bottom pattern, you know, kind of forming. Could we, um, and if it happens, it needs to happen tomorrow. Could we get a big bearish candle just to wipe out all the bulls and then trade back down to 156 on the Dow ETF? Yes, we could. Will we? Mm, probably not. I don't think we will, but it's, it's possible. But it needs to happen tomorrow if it's going to happen. And I'm just over here looking at some of these markets. And uh, today was really a very bullish day across the board on a lot of stocks. So probably going to get stopped out of a few of our uh, bearish positions. Here's Disney. So Disney, we got a bearish position on Disney. We got our stop in place. It was looking really nice the other day. And we had a really decent bullish gap today. So probably going to lose an R on Disney. Boeing, ticker symbol BA. Boeing, we did get stopped out of today. Uh, we may end up setting up another trade on this one potentially, but uh, we trade right into the 20. I will be keeping a close eye on this for a new setup because this offers a little bit better risk reward. We did lose less than an R on the swing trade, so that's the good news. If it does go down, we can try to consider getting back in. Uh, if it goes up, we got stopped out, lost less than R on, on Boeing. That is life. Uh, we are in a bullish trade, right? So we are in a bullish swing trade, which is TRP, Trans Canada. Got triggered in on this one on the 19th of February, which was Friday, and we continued up a little bit higher today. Ultimate target around 44 and some change. Don't know if we'll hit that, but that one's obviously going to take its sweet, sweet time doing its thing. Skywork Solution trailed out of Skywork Solution by a few pennies, but it was profitable, right? We entered bullish back. Uh, I'm sorry, entered bearish back in here. We got trailed out today. The high was 65.19. The stop was 65.19. So we got trailed out of Skyworks for a very small profit, too small to even count really, and that's 
really about it on Skywork Solutions. So as of this exact moment in time, um, the only new swing trade, MDLZ, I wanted to close below 39.47. Did not happen. The low of today was actually 3950. So I'm gonna keep that close. Um, more than likely, maybe even trade, maybe change into an intraday trigger. But that's the most recent swing trade that we're not in, that we're keeping an eye on. Everything else is triggered and or doing its thing. Here's one that is very, uh, really, really interesting is Apple. So Apple today, the high of Apple was um, 196.90. Yesterday's range was a very, very small candle, very small doji, and at some point today, it was, this was also almost a perfect doji. And my thought was, if this ends as a really, really small doji, this is almost gonna be like a no-brainer trade. As of right now, it's still a pretty decent trade. Um, two very, very small candles on Apple. Here's a little bit of a double bottom. Here's the close above the neckline. Here's the retest. And honestly, if we break above $97.06 on Apple, I will be a little bit more bullish than bearish with a stop at 95.71-ish. Uh, that, so that would be the stop. Or if tomorrow we break bearish, um, that would be the bearish entry and the stop would be up here. So this is gonna be an aggressive one. I'll be keeping a close eye on it for tomorrow. Tech Giant Tuesday on tomorrow, uh, that's Apple. Netflix got a new put sale on Netflix. The March week two down there at 80. Uh, if we trigger higher. I kind of like this little higher low building on Netflix. Today was a new white soldier, so if we break that high, I think Netflix will probably continue up just a little bit. Google looking a tad bullish. So there's Google. Uh, looking for a bull put spread on Google down here somewhere. Um, 680, 675 as an option trade for my swing traders who trade stock or options. If it closes above 736.72, I'm gonna be more bullish than bearish on Google as it is trading down here at a relatively decent support. So again, here's your support line. Very, very strong bearish move. We're retesting, this looks like a little bit of a higher low. Speaking of a higher low, Facebook got stopped out of a bear call spread today on Facebook. Uh, Solange unraveled her March week one. So I had the I had the 110 109 expiring this Friday, and you can see my little wave count here. I kind of anticipated for this to be uh, the B wave and roll, roll down. Still could happen theoretically, uh, but I'll I'll keep that analysis on there more or less just in case I can hop back on something else. But tomorrow I do kind of expect a potential retest of this retest gap. I don't know exactly what size. But on Facebook, if we can retest a little bit, uh, since it did make a higher high and a higher low today, retest and bounce, I think Facebook could continue up a little bit. But either way, good job, Solange, on your unravel. I lost very small in that position, but with spreads, I knew it was coming because that was one of the first losses I've had in a long time um, on a spread. So usually if I get 13, 14, 15 wins in a row on a credit spread. I know that there's going to be one coming. Uh, there's one. So I'm sure there's going to be a few more in the very near future that I'm going to have to make some work on. But anyway, that's Facebook. That's just an update on Facebook. And that is an update on some of the swing positions that we are keeping an eye on. Ladies and gentlemen, traders from around the world, thanks so much for watching this Real Life Star Review. It's been a very interesting February. Did some analysis today. We placed, I believe, five or six bullish day trades in February. And uh, none of them really worked as far as the, the day trades go. So the market is relatively bullish, um, you know, short term speaking, at least I think so. And we've been trying to take some bullish trades. It's just that most of the moves have been happening um, while the market is closed, right? So the market is closed, the market opens, and then boom, we're up 1.2%. So there's a lot of gapping going on. If you are a day trader, it's actually a really good market for some moves. I mean, uh, Dean Foods was the big winner of the day. We traded Dean Foods bearish. Uh, a lot of traders traded VRX today, bullish and bearish. Uh, the bearish one had the most edge in my personal opinion, but either one um, had some good opportunities. So VRX, here's the five minute, was a bearish retest gap, and VRX just was smooth like butter uh, right there. Absolutely fantastic. If you had to guess what moving average it pulled into and just rolled over gorgeously, bearish retest move, Failed the 10 EMA like I failed my managerial economics test in college. Bam, right there. Just absolutely fantastic. So anyway, the bearish trades still working. Bullish day trades, eh. We tried CSX today. It did work. Those are the only two trades that we took officially in the morning room was Dean Foods and CSX. We tried taking CSX bullish and got stopped out right around there during that garbage for a very small profit. But regardless, we're trying uh, day trades. They're... They're working, it's just that the market is trying to move bullish. It's doing its best, 
It's just doing it in a very, very weird fashion. So take it, take it slow. If you can't find a trade that you like, cash is always king. If you can't find a trade that you don't like, sit on your hands, wait, be patient. That is one of the best attributes you can have as a trader. You guys absolutely rock. I'll see you Wednesday. And until next time, remember, love life, live life, and trade it. See you.